We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Ship Up. Now we are in Bahati Division near Nakuru Town and I heard there's a hotel nearby so let me find out if I could get a room. Mr. Innkeeper? Yeah! Could I get a room please? I'm afraid not madam. We are fully booked. And this is an animal hotel. We've got sheep, we've got goats, and we've got chickens and rabbits. No space for you. All that in one room? Yep. Yeah. Wow. You know what Naomi? I think that this farmer needs a real shepherd. So let's get started. Right. That's right. This shamba has all those animals in one shed. But before we start shaping up, we need to put up our base camp tent and meet the farmers. Now, Joseph and Gladys, how long have you lived in this shamba? Five years. Five years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how big is it? One acre. What are you planting? I uh, plant maize, I plant vegetables, I plant tomatoes, mm -hmm. I plant beans, ah. uh, even hohos. Even, uh, yeah. Oh wow, you're quite a farmer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what problems are you facing in your farm right now? Uh, the problem we have mm -hmm. diseases in the, uh, our shamba. Uh, yeah. Especially on, on, which, on, on which crop? In tomatoes. Tomatoes? In you tomatoes. have a big problem with tomatoes. Yeah. What's happened to your tomatoes? They uh, get blight. How about the maize that I'm seeing around uh, here? Maize are good. Maize is very good? Yeah. So the market is big. Uh, no, you are selling a lot of maize. Uh, we will teach you how to market your maize. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And how about you, Gladys? Now, do you have kids? Yeah, I have two. You have children, two yeah. small children? Yes. Yeah, or are they big? No, small ones. Or small ones? Yeah. So now, would you help them there around the farm? Yeah, I help him. What would you do? At home in the evening? Uh, when I finish to help him, I come to see with the machine. Oh, you have a sewing machine? Yeah, I have. And I noticed you don't have electricity, so how do you do that? I use kerosene lamp. Oh, you, is that good for you? No, it is bad for my eyes. All right. I, I'm not seeing very well. I see. Cool. We'll see what we can do about that. Okay. Yeah. So Joseph and Gladys, Shamba Ship Up is here. Yeah. We are Shamba. We'll see where we can help out. We've got experts. Look at your tomatoes. Yeah. We'll advise you how you can join a grain group for yeah. your maize. Yeah. And we'll see what you can do about your animal hotel. Yeah, okay. All right? Thank you. The first item on my list is to shape up the animal shed. Dr. Ruth Wangeshi from Unga Farm Care has come to take a look. Hmm? Now, Doc. You have inspected what we are calling the animal hotel. <laughs> and you have seen for yourself. What do you think? Actually, it's a lily animal hotel. There is goats there, there is sheep, there is chicken. <laughs> yeah, and a <laughs> and receptionist. And a receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And that combination lily, it's not hygienic because chicken are living below the goats, which is not hygienic, it's not healthy. The sheep are somewhere that is muddy, which is not hygienic either. The goats are somehow okay, but we need to modify the housing of the goats. We need to create spaces so that if you can see, the dung is not going down as it comes. The trough looks okay, but we need a trough for the, for the sheep. Uh, we also need a separate house for the chickens. Somewhere we can, we can build it very well with a lot of ventilation and somewhere we can build the laying boxes. So, so what yeah. is missing here is good management? Good management, yes. What do you think of the feed that you see on the troughs? Uh, what I can see right now is only grass and some weeds. And maybe I would like to ask Joseph whether they do any supplementation of grains. We give, uh, when we grab the, the maize. Mm -hmm. 
then we dig them. And what kind of maize? The green maize or the one we separate, the rotten maize we usually separate? The rotten maize. Is that advisable? Actually, no. As you have mentioned, it's rotten. So rotten mm. is something that is bad. And secondly, we, we may be leasing our goats to aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is produced by fungi and grows on rotten grains and maize. If your animals are eating this, then eventually you also get ill through the milk or meat. The toxin has a long-term effect of causing cancer in humans. So now you recommend that we officially close down the animal hotel. Yeah, one of the major effects we have by mixing these animals together is uh, contamination of diseases. There are those diseases that can come from sheep to goats, back to sheep, and also to the chicken, and also to the rabbits. Yeah, secondly, there is that cross-contamination of worms. Actually, the, the cuckoos are taking a lot of worms down there because they are the ones living down there, and also the, the sheep and goats. Okay. So if we maintain that hygiene, we are going to keep so many diseases at bay. Shamba Sheep of Handyman Karis is on hand to get started on the separate animal houses straight away. Joseph grows vegetables for his family and to sell at the market, but he has low yields and poor growth. He needs a soil test first of all. By sending your soil for a test, you are able to determine what some of the problems are. It is like sending your soil to a doctor. Once you have the results, you can treat your soil to make it healthy for better production. Agricultural expert Jane Jerry sent the soil to be tested and is back on the shamba with the results. Yes, Joseph. Yeah. What was your problem once again? My problem was soil. When I planted vegetable or tomato, they are not good. They are doing, they are not doing well. Oh, so the, the crop performance was very poor? Very poor. You had some low yields? Yeah. As per the result is that your pH is very low. Okay, okay. Then your soils are very acidic. Okay. So you need to put agricultural rime. Uh -huh. And then your phosphorus is also very low. Okay. So you need to put phosphorus in your soils. Okay. And you can get it from the TSP, that oh. is triple super phosphate. Okay. And you're going to have very beautiful crops. Good. And very high yields okay. from your from Thank your you. farm. Thank you. How do I use this? You can put it in your soil one month before you plant. Okay. The planting season. Okay. So and if for this particular field, you need a hundred kg for one acre. Okay. Yes, that's according to the analysis we got from your soil test. Okay. For the TSP, you only need 60 kgs per one acre. Okay. This is particular field. Okay. Yes, the one that we did some test on. If soil has low pH, which means it's acidic, you need to add lime one month before planting to improve the soil and to give you good yields. You can also add TSP fertilizer when planting, about 5 grams or one bottle cup per hole to make sure the phosphorus levels are good. The maize on this shamba grows well, but Joseph finds markets a problem. Selling at the time of harvest can produce a low price. One way farmers can market maize well is to form or join a green group. Now, Mr. Nene, Joseph here was explaining to us earlier on that he's having a problem selling his maize. You belong to a grain group and maybe you can be able to help him. So maybe you can explain to him what is a grain group. Okay, grain groups is a sort of a system whereby we came together and we formed a group and we are farming a maize as a product and we sell together as a group. It's a group that it's a, sells maize. maize. It's a group that sells maize. Yes. You, do you farm together? We farm together, mm -hmm. individually, mm -hmm. and then we come and then we sell together. Groups tend to be up to 30 farmers, but you can start your own with as little as five farmers. So Lydia, you are part of the green group. Could you maybe tell us how it has helped you? When we bring our grains together, we sell them together. One of the benefits is that we have plenty of food in our, our house. We are able to educate your, our children without any stress. And we have some to sell. Wow! So it seems there are lots of benefits of a grain group. 
Mr. Nene's group uses a storage facility such as this one in Akuru. Storage for the small scale farmers offers uh, money in their pockets in the sense that we'll be able to store the grain for them and the grain must appreciate in value. There will be good storage and then there's a good market for the grain which will uh, trickle down to the farmer as profit. Once a group has harvested, they have their maize here to be stored. This means it is secure and can be sold at a higher price many months later. We've been in a position to our farmers bring an 80 kg bag of maize at 1,000 Kenya shilling, store for them, and then four months down the line, they have been able to reap the benefits of selling the same amount of maize at 3,400 shillings a bag, and the stalling changes have just been at 200 shillings or the same for the period. To set up a grain group, farmers can get advice from the EAGC, the East African Grain Council. Farmers also need to talk to a bank. KCB has a special accounts for grain groups. Now, Steve, as you can see, Joseph and Gladys are getting good maize, but they still have that problem with markets, right? Maybe you, this is where you come in. How can you help them? We bring the groups together. Like now, we can, we can let you uh, be in touch with the grain handlers. They'll have storage, uh, store the maize for you. Then when the maize fetches the higher prices, that's when you will sell. Okay. But in between, you may be able to use the grains, that seed that you have received from the grain handlers, okay. as a collateral. Okay. Yeah, that will, will be like, uh, it, it will be standing for you, for you to get a facility for us, so we can lend to the group members. So they can use their stored maize as security for the loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, yeah, that's how it works. So the more they store, the higher the loan goes? Yes. Now, Steve, maybe you explain to them uh, point by point, how do they start this? When you come to KCB, we'll uh, assist you open the account, the group, the individual, uh, with the group representative, those are the signatories that will be there, we'll open the account for you. We have an account called Tungani account. Tungani is Axwell word mean coming together. So we'll open for them that account and they'll facilitate their uh, banking uh, initiatives. What are the main, main advantages of a grain group uh, being joined to, to a bank like yours? A group is a, a strength. So when uh, they are in a group, uh, they stand a higher chance of uh, success. How about the kind, uh, if uh, you are five, we can join the, 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 that green group? Yeah, because like uh, a group is uh, from five to thirty. Okay. We take uh, that is a group what we call is, uh, can be a, a very good group. Ah, okay. everything clear now. Yeah. KCB also offers insurance to groups in case of crop failure. In case of a bad weather, in case of crop failure, you guys can insure them security. Yeah, we need, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We facilitate the insurance companies. They do crop financing, uh, crop insurance. Then, when something like that happens, as we reschedule the loan, we'll consider it. Mm. Yeah, we consider it because we are at the ground. We are always with the farmers. We see whatever they do in the field. So you want to tell. Gladys here and Joseph and other farmers that their crops are secure with you and with a grain group. They are very much secure. So the KCB to Ungani account can help your grain group succeed. What are the keys for? Um, so you trying to sort out which key goes to which room in the animal hotel. We are building a new house for the animals. And you, how are you getting along? Very well. Joseph had good advice about the soil. And I think I need another expert to give me advice on these bad tomatoes. You want some taste? Oh, no, 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 oh, no. <laughs> well, there's still lots of work to be done right here on Shamba Shepherd. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are still here in Bahati Division, very near Nakuru town. Gladys and Joseph have had expert advice, but there's still problems to solve. So, let's go! Gladys and Joseph live here with their two young children. They are determined to make a living from their Shamba. So far, we've given them advice on joining a grain group, and we are working to improve their animal housing. 
water is often a problem on Shambas. It often takes a long time to collect. Because I travel very far to search water, and when it rains, uh, I collect much water, but I, ha I have nowhere to put. The tank is small. Gladys has some guttering to harvest rainwater, but it is not very efficient. We are going to help by putting up new plastic guttering that will stay clean and rust free and the rainwater can collect in a plastic tank. This will give easy access to water for washing and cooking. My next task is to sort out the tomato problem. Daniel, I see you've had a look around at Joseph's tomato. Yes. And Joseph, what happened? Uh, I planted very well mm -hmm. and <coughs> I don't know what is going on because uh, tomato are uh, a lot of diseases. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is soil or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Daniel, what did you, what went wrong? <laughs> well, uh, I noted the three major problems far farmers fail to do. One, yes, the choose of the right variety. Right. The importance of choosing the right variety is actually uh, there are different varieties of tomato that mm -hmm. are suitable in different areas, mm -hmm. and some of them they are resistant to diseases and pests. Right. Uh, like this one he planted. Actually, you can see there are some nodes. These are pests that are live in the soil, mm -hmm. which actually destroy the, the plant mm -hmm. and actually reduce or cause the plant to abort. Right. Yeah. We have two, two types of uh, bright. We have early bright and late bright. Right. Early bright usually come uh, uh, when the plant is still young. And right. late bright actually affect the plant when it is mature, mm -hmm. like this one. Right. You can see the effect of it. Mm -hmm. All the leaves has already been dried. Yes. And right. you know, leaves are the factory yes. of the plant. Because the plant is not making any food, uh -huh. Automatically, the, 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 the already formed fruit will uh, uh, drop. Anything else that could have been a, the problem? Another problem is actually, if you can look at this, mm -hmm. there, are, there are pests. Mm -hmm. These are bollworms. Uh, what can I do to come better? I'm going to introduce you to a new variety that is resistant to that and also that can tolerate some diseases like this nematode. Okay. And again, I'm going to introduce you on uh, a program on how to be using the, 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 the fungicide okay. that will prevent area and bright and again insecticide that will control some of these um, borrowworms, aphids, etc. that affected your crops. Don't worry. Mm. Okay. There's Thank hope. Uh, there is hope. <laughs> yes. Okay. We are going to start from the beginning with the seed variety. Kilele F1 is a hybrid variety that is pest and disease tolerant and will give you high yields. Within an average of one acre, you can harvest about 30,000 kilos of tomatoes. Kilele F1 will also harvest after only 10 weeks, meaning a quicker profit to the farmer and a good yield even in a drier season. Can you show me how, how to plant or where to plant? Yeah. I think the critical thing during planting actually is the number of plants per area is very critical. If you mm -hmm. want to, to, to maximize, to maximize pot yield potential of any crop is actually to, to, to know the number of plants per unit area. Okay. Second is actually the, the soil fertility. Okay. We shall need fertilizer and manure because okay. it's a heavy feeder. Because the more it produces, it means it mm. requires a lot of um, nutrients. Right. Again, we need to, to select a site, a site that is free from wind and again where there is no a lot of shade okay. because that one will affect the production. Okay. Okay. And again, the, the area must be weed free. To, because some of these weeds are host of pests and diseases, mm -hmm. and again they will compete for space and nutrient for the for the for the for the plants that we, we intend to plant. To plant the Kilele F1 tomato seeds, you must prepare the soil, and so it is weed free. Space the rows at six inches apart. Dig a shallow trench. Mix in some manure with the soil. Sprinkle the seeds in the trench. Cover with a thin layer of soil. Add a layer of mulch. Do not use green mulch as this attracts pests. Liberally water over the seeded area. Oh, while Joseph and Daniel have been planting, I've been reading a book about tomatoes. It's very, very informative. Everyone should read books like this when you're farming. This one is a tomato farming handbook. After 30 days, the seedlings will be ready to be transplanted.
Prepare your land to make sure it is free of weed. Make holes 60 cm by 60 cm apart, that's 2 feet by 2 feet. Apply a handful of manure per hole and mix. Then add 10 grams of TSP fertilizer per hole. That's about two bottle top cups. Mix in the hole. Plant one seedling per hole and surround with soil. Make sure you water each seedling. What now we need to address is the second step. Right. This is the most critical part where mm -hmm. plant need to be treated very well because we want this variety to express its genetic potential. Right. And uh, what we need to do is actually now is to to handle to start handling issues concerning pests and diseases. Right. Now what we need to do immediately is actually to to drench these tomato seedlings with a, a product that is called Actara. Really? And what this is, is that? A very, this, is a, this is a product called Actara. Mm -hmm. It's a product that we are using we are going to use in this plot mm -hmm. to ensure that these tomato are protected against array and array attack by aphids, white fry and uh, thrips. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Because wow. those are the major pests that will attack this and it will reduce the, the his expected yield. Right. Yeah. When using any chemicals, always wear protective clothing and read the instructions on the packet carefully. Actera is pre measured in the packet. Use one whole packet with 20 liters of water. Then drench the seedlings. This will protect them for 42 days from chewing and sucking pests. After 42 days, you can then address specific pests or diseases with specific products if any problems arise. With good management, Joseph will start producing healthy crops of tomatoes to make a profit at the market. While I'm still working on the new animal homes, Naomi is an expert for Gladys. Gladys had told us earlier that in the evenings she uses her sewing machine, but with no electricity, she has to use a kerosene lamp. Not only is it costly to buy fuel every week, but they are not good for people's lungs and eyes. Okay, the problem is when I use a kerosene lamp to see you at night and I have a problem in my eyes. Mm. Yeah. It's difficult to see what you're doing. Yeah. So I have a solution for you so okay. that you don't have to struggle with uh, sewing at night with a kerosene lantern. Okay. I have a D-Light, yeah. which is a solar lantern. Okay. which means you charge it using energy from the sun. Okay. And it's very easy to use because you just press this one button yeah. and then you adjust, it has four settings. Okay. So you adjust it depending on the kind of work that you want to do. Okay. Yeah. We use this only button? Yeah, okay. only one button and you adjust depending on the work that you're doing. Okay. Yeah. The four types of light that I showed you yeah. all go for different uh, periods of time. Okay. So the first one goes for 100 hours, okay. the second one goes for 12 hours, the third goes for 6 hours, okay. and then the last one, which is the brightest one, goes for, for 4 hours. 4 hours? Yes. So once the farmer has, a, has, a, has bought the delight, so is it free to use? Yeah, there's nothing else to pay for because right. you don't need to buy kerosene anymore mm -hmm. and you just use the sun and the sun is always free. I have small children. Is it same to them? Safe to them? Yeah, this, it's absolutely harmless and totally safe even for small children. Okay. Yeah, they can read with it, they can play around it, there's no problem. So, are you happy? I'm happy, I'm very happy. So, with her new delight, now Gladys can sew in the night without harming her eyes, save money and is safe for her children. Meanwhile, work has finished. And so the animals do not have to live together. This will prevent the spread of diseases. The sheep have a new pen and trough. The chickens have a new coop. And the goats have improved living conditions. Not forgetting they all need a good supply of fresh food and clean water. Wow, what a shepherd. I'm sure Gladys and Joseph here have enjoyed themselves and you've learned so much. Yeah. About your grain crop. Yeah. And then, of course, we can't forget about ah. your sheep, your goats, your chickens, and your rabbits all in one place. Yeah. <laughs> How is the change now? Ah, the change is very good. Are yeah, you, you can happy? harvest water yeah. to use around the house. Yes. And you also have delight. Now you can be able to see what yes. you're sowing. I really sow at night. Are you happy about that? I'm very happy. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Gladys and Joseph have learned so much, and you too can do the same, right here on Shamba Shepa. To receive all Shamba Shepa leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Shamba Shepa is forming a potato farmer group to get more information on good seed, potatoes, and markets. If you are interested, send your name and address with the word potato to 30606. Shamba Shepa is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashepup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shepa, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepa. 